So this is uh, part five of the lecture, Linear Systems and Their Diagonalization. Um, in this part, I want to show you uh, a previously recorded uh, video uh, demonstrating the Fourier transform. I go through it um, at a very uh, basic level, um, kind of exposing every detail. And so I hope uh, you find it useful. So in the top left corner, I have a two-dimensional image known as the Shep Logan Phantom used in medical image uh, simulation, medical image reconstruction simulation. And uh, what I've done is I've taken a horizontal line profile through the center of that image, and that is what I'm plotting here. I'm calling this a one-dimensional profile, f of x. x is the spatial coordinate. Here, it's, here it is just a pixel number as I count the pixels from left to right. I just read off the pixel value, the pixel intensity, and I plot that in this profile in this box here. Now, we're going to consider that as a real periodic function. And so that means we need to imagine this profile as being infinitely duplicated um, off to the left-hand side, an infinite number of duplicates, and then off to the right-hand side, an infinite number of duplicates as well, and that would make it a periodic function. Obviously, we're just looking at uh, just one of the periods. Um, now, to do the Fourier series, we need to find uh, the coefficients for the sines and cosines. So over here, I'm showing the first cosine term, uh, which is cos of zero frequency, and there's the sine term of zero frequency, which is just zero, so it doesn't even come into the Fourier series, actually. And that's why for the sine terms, it just goes from n equals one to infinity, um, or in the version that I'm showing, minus infinity to plus infinity, but the sine zero gives no contribution. Um, but the, the cos of zero uh, does, and this is um, corresponding to a zero, basically, in the, in the Fourier series. So to find the coefficient, a0, that means we need to multiply the profile by cos0, by that constant function that's equal to 1 everywhere. So when we multiply the function f of x by cosine, we get this result here. And because the cosine is just a value of 1 everywhere for zero frequency, therefore we get exactly uh, the same um, result as the original function that we're wanting to express as a Fourier series. Um, so that's the first stage. The next stage is to then take uh, the integral of that to sum up all the values as we scan across um, all the x positions there in this product. And then once we've done that uh, definite integral, that summation, we then divide um, by the range of integration. So here I'd have divided by 256. Um, incidentally, I'm leaving out the omega zero, um, although it is in here because none of these functions um, are periodic over two pi. You can see that this period is actually 256 uh, pixels long. So I, I do use an omega zero, but I've just left it out for clarity. Um, so I do the definite integral and then I divide by the range of integration. Here is 256, and that will give me, um, in this context of looking at cos zero, that will give me the coefficient a zero. So I'm plotting here the coefficients and I've got uh, the zeros, zeros in the middle here, and I've got, I'm going to do negative frequencies off to the left and positive frequencies off to the right. And so here I'm showing there's about a value of just over, it's just over 0.1, okay? That's um, the average value of that function. Um, and obviously for the sine, um, it's just zero, so the product of the function with sine of zero is also zero, and therefore the definite integral is zero, and so no result. Then over here in this box, I'm beginning to uh, form the Fourier series. So I'm saying I'm going to need a0 times cos of zero. Okay, so that's just one. And b0 times sine zero, which is just zero. And so what I'm doing is taking this value that I just found from that definite integral with the normalization, that value a0, and I'm multiplying it by one. And so what I get in my Fourier synthesis, my Fourier series here, I'm getting that value, and it's, it's as I say, it's over 0.1, and you can see here it's just above 0.1, and it's just a flat term. That's the first term in the Fourier series. So it's a very gross approximation, as uh, reflected by the error on the left-hand side here. You can see, I mean, you have to watch out for the scaling on this, but you can see that effectively I'm, I'm quite a way off. I've got notable error 
uh, particularly these two peaks, are completely absent, of course, um, from that Fourier synthesis. Um, and then in the bottom left box here, I'm just showing uh, the magnitude um, of the AN and BN uh, coefficients, just so as we can kind of look at them in combination to see um, what the magnitude of the, of the coefficients are. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on to the uh, next frequency. Okay, so this is an interesting case. This is cos1. Uh, so now you see that cos1, and there is an omega naught in there, so that'd be like cos1 omega naught x, if you like, rather than t, because these are spatial functions rather than temporal ones, but the mathematics is identical. Um, so now I just have one cosine that fits within the 256 samples that make up the period of the function. Likewise for the sine, I just have one sine waveform fitting within that period. Um, to find the amount of that cosine and the amount of that sine that are present in f of x, what do we do? Well, we multiply uh, the function by the, the um, cosines and sines for which we wish to find the coefficients. So I'm going to take f, multiply it by cos. So all I do is scan across f of x, I scan across cos 1x, and I just multiply um, each value by each value. So in other words, as I scan across f of x, I get a function value, and I multiply that by the respective function values found for each position in the cosine curve. And so that's why I get this rather un unusual looking um, function. All it is, is a, is a cosine that has modulated that um, function f of x. Um, and then when I've done that, um, I'm in a position again to do the definite integral. So I sum up all the values um, and normalize by, you know, by dividing by the range of integration. And then it's hard to see here, but I would have then also calculated a, a coefficient a1. Um, I've done the same for the sine here, and so you just got a sine modulated version of the function there, which I've then integrated and divided by the range of integration. And you can see here we get a very small negative amount for that uh, sine 1x. Okay, and so this is the net result here of um, a1 cos 1x plus b1 sin 1x. In other words, just using those newly found coefficients for those two um, functions, the cosine and the sine. And so this, this box here is showing me what I'm about to add to this Fourier synthesis. And in fact, it already has added it, but it's scarcely noticeable, just like these coefficients are scarcely noticeable because um, you can see this profile, you know, is really dominated by higher frequency components. And so, these very broad, low frequency, smoothly changing functions hardly feature at all in this uh, function. Okay, so let's press on to another coefficient. Um, so this is just doing the negative um, frequency. So I've just got a cos minus one X looks identical. So all the same argumentation holds that I've just given. But for the sine negative frequency, um, we do now get a negative sine wave that, you know, because it's an odd function, it does, does look different. We get the negative of the sine. Uh, there's the product with the function. And now you can see I've kind of got this equal and opposite uh, outcome for Bn, which is what would be expected um, when this is a, a real function that we're doing this for. Um, there's the, uh, the, the addition of a minus 1 cos minus 1x plus b minus 1 sine minus 1x which I'm then adding to my Fourier synthesis, and it hasn't done a great deal. Again, it's a very small contribution. So let's, uh, and the error is still large. So let's keep uh, pressing on. Okay, so this is cos two. Now that means we've got two uh, waveforms um, of cosine fitting within the period, two sine functions fitting within the period. Again, we take the products shown here and here, do the definite integral, divide by the range of integration, and then plot, um, the values found here and here. So this is a little bit more of a significant contribution here. By the way, the scale on this box is different to this box. That's just because I wanted this to be more visible, okay? So you can see that we've now added together um, cos2 um, with coefficient a2 and assign uh, 2x with coefficient b2 and it gives us uh, this net function here, which I'm adding on to the Fourier synthesis. So it's still well off. You can see the Fourier synthesis is nowhere near uh, that profile just yet. 
So um, the same arguments go for the negative frequency. So we'll just keep pressing on a bit. We'll just do a few more of those, few more of those terms. And as we keep going with that process that I've talked you through at length now, um, you can see that this Fourier synthesis will slowly um, build up um, in better and better approximation of this uh, 1D profile. So let's take a look uh, at, say, cos 22x. We've now got 22 waveforms fitting in there. Here's the product of the function f with cos 22x. I do the summation, do the division by the range of integration, and that gives me the coefficient a22. Same kind of argument applies for the sine function down the right-hand side there. And that means by the time of n equal to 22, um, we're now getting this um, component here being added on to the Fourier synthesis. And you can see that now we've got to a frequency of n equals 22. Um, obviously, we've got a, a higher frequency component. So this will allow more of these sharper details in the profile to be synthesized in the, in the Fourier series expression. You can see the error is getting a little bit smaller now. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, so also at this point, we can begin to notice that um, the an coefficients are notably larger than the bn coefficients. So have a think about why that is. Um, the obvious answer is that more or less, maybe not exactly, more or less, this profile is an even function. You could imagine drawing a line down the middle there, and you can see it's more or less a reflection. In other words, if we were to start here and go off in the right direction or in the left direction, we'd more or less get the same function value. So that's what an even function behaves like. And cosines are even functions, whereas sines are odd functions. And so perhaps it's no surprise that we're being dominated by the cosine even function components, and we've only got small little adjustments for the fact that it's not a perfectly even function. You can already see, for example, this dip here is not as uh, wide as this dip here in the profile. So we know it isn't an even function, um, but it's, it's close to one. So let's press on with more coefficients. So basically, we're, we're getting higher and higher frequency components for the cosines and for the sines, and so therefore the, the Fourier synthesis, as you can see here, is now taking on quite nice uh, details that are getting closer and closer to what that profile is, and you can see we're just adding on those high frequency components. Off to the side here, we're just getting effectively a representation of, of the spectrum, if you like, in other words, the spectrum of the Fourier coefficients. It shows us that nearly as always, we've got, we're very dominated by low frequencies, and then we have smaller and smaller contributions of the higher frequencies. So let's keep pressing on. The error is getting quite a bit smaller here as well, which is very reassuring. Um, hopefully you'll agree now, this Fourier synthesis is looking very nice indeed. Um, that's shaping up very well. Um, because we're still missing some of the high frequency components, for that reason, we're getting these kind of Gibbs ringing artifacts where we get this kind of oscillation at the edges. And that's because at the moment, we've only considered um, some of the frequencies and we've got effectively an abrupt cutoff in the frequencies. And when you have an abrupt cutoff in the frequencies, because we haven't yet added those higher frequencies in, then we often get that characteristic Gibbs ringing artifact. But we're going to carry on and fill in those, because you can see here, there are no contributions at those higher frequencies for the BN or the AN. But we're going to carry on now and fill those in, and so we'll be able to eliminate that Gibbs ringing effect. Um, so pressing on, we're really kind of getting there now. Um, the Fourier synthesis is getting more and more close to the profile as reflected by this diminishing error on the left-hand side here. Um, and hopefully you should also be able to see the logic in why for the higher frequency components, um, the coefficients uh, tend, I mean, not exclusively, they do go up again here, but they tend to get smaller. Um, 
And effectively, that's because the high frequency components are basically going up and down very rapidly for the cosine and the sine. So that means if a function is more or less flat or only slowly changing, then you're, you're adding and subtracting very quickly um, adjacent parts of that function, which are always going to end up with small net contributions. Um, and so in the limiting case, for example, if we just considered a completely flat function, then if you multiply that by obviously a, a periodic function um, that's positive and dips negative, you'll end up with a zero result. And so as we get to these higher and higher frequencies, so effectively we get smaller and smaller coefficients, generally speaking. It's not entirely the case, but that's the general trend. Okay, so we're nearly there now. I think we're going to need to go up to 128 because I've got 256 samples here. So we're going to go from, um, we basically have negative frequencies and positive frequencies, uh, where the positive frequency of 128 will be uh, the Nyquist frequency, which means that we get uh, a cosine that goes up and then down immediately. And the reason we've got 128 of them is because we've got 256 samples to accommodate an up then down of a cosine, then obviously we can only fit in 128 such functions because we need one pixel for going up, one pixel for going down. So therefore 128 times two gives us 256. So that's known as the Nyquist frequency. It's the highest frequency that we can represent on a grid um, like this. So we're nearly there now. Okay, closing in. There we go. That's the Nyquist frequency, the highest frequency that can be represented on this grid. Incidentally, of course, this is a discrete implementation of the Fourier series. Uh, what, what I'm teaching here is just the continuous version so I'm just kind of giving you extra information for the discrete version, but we'll go into the discrete uh, Fourier transform and so on in another video. But this is just uh, to illustrate the principles of the continuous Fourier series and also the, um, thereby also the, indirectly the complex Fourier series as well, which is gonna behave in a similar way, uh, the same way actually for real valued periodic functions. Okay, so this is now finished, and I hope you'll agree that this Fourier synthesis now looks effectively perfect. That's what the error is saying here. We've got no error at all to within machine precision on this MATLAB implementation. Just to say, I did do this from scratch in MATLAB, as you can see visually. I mean, if I'd, if I'd done an FFT, or if I'd used their DFT matrix or whatever, then I wouldn't necessarily have got all of these components. I certainly wouldn't have done it with the FFT. Uh, but by literally manually finding the cosine and the sine functions, doing the multiplications, doing the summation, doing the division, and then using those coefficients for the cosine and the sine to rebuild the function, I've literally done it from scratch at every single, uh, for every single stage of the process. So hopefully you can see that actually it's, it's pretty simple to code up. Um, okay, so that's all I wanted to say here. Thanks for listening. So I hope you found uh, that uh, demo of the uh, Fourier transform and Fourier synthesis uh, helpful. Uh, the next part in the, the series um, for this lecture, Linear Systems and Their Diagonalization, diagonalization the next part is um, part six on the convolution theorem and covering also back project then filter image reconstruction. Thank you.